Tesla electric vehicles versus internal combustion engine vehicles, there's one really important fact that everybody's overlooking. So what is everybody missing? Well, as of this year, the selling price of EVs might be just about at parity with the selling price of internal combustion engine cars. But the lifespan of an EV is double or more that of an ICE vehicle. Why does this matter? All of the financial comparisons I've seen out there assume a single lifespan of 100,000 to 150,000 miles for each car. But is that a fair comparison? The lifespan of a typical internal combustion engine car or truck is about 150,000 miles, give or take. Look, I've personally owned two vehicles just past 200,000 miles, but I can tell you the uncertainty of when something will break is not fun. You know, the normal stuff like needing a new alternator, a starter, a water pump, timing belt, radiator, muffler, or worse yet, your entire engine or transmission. Yep, I've been there. On the other hand, an electric vehicle doesn't have any of those components, so there are far fewer chances for things to break. I think we've all heard that an ICE vehicle has about 200 moving parts, while an EV has about 20. So what is that one thing that everybody's missing about an electric vehicle versus an ICE vehicle? Well, instead of the lifespan of an EV being 150,000 miles, it's at least 300,000 miles. And some estimate it could be as high as 500,000 miles or more. Why does this fact matter? And does it make a big difference when it comes to total cost of ownership? If we try to compare the total cost of ownership for an ICE vehicle to the total cost of ownership for an electric vehicle, not having to buy another car or SUV at 150,000 miles has a huge impact and no one, no one is talking about it. What if I told you that keeping a Tesla Model 3 for 300,000 miles instead of two comparable ICE vehicles would cost you 66% less than a comparable ICE vehicle over that 300,000 miles? Yes, 66% less. Or to put it another way, the ICE vehicle will cost you about two times more than the electric vehicle over 300,000 miles of driving. Yes, that's 2x. Keep watching if you want to see the details. Are you also aware that the cost just to fuel and maintain an ICE vehicle is well over half the original purchase price? 68% to be exact if the purchase price is near the national average. This means you'll likely spend a good chunk of the 48,000 new car purchase price on just fuel and maintenance over 150,000 miles. Bet you hadn't thought about that. For a comparable electric vehicle, the cost of fuel and maintenance is about 39% of the original purchase price over that same 150,000 miles. This means the ICE vehicle will cost you 1.7 times the cost to fuel and maintain an electric vehicle over 150,000 miles. Look, if any of this matters to you, stick around and I'll show you the analysis of how I came up with these crazy numbers. And by the way, if you'd like to download the spreadsheet model that I created, I posted it on Patreon and all Patreon members can download the spreadsheet for free and knock yourself out analyze anything you want there and please let me know if you find any mistakes or anything that I did wrong in the analysis but I think it's pretty good so you can see the complete model here I've put all the parameters that you can change in yellow font as you can see over here and over here and then the analysis is all down here so what are some of the assumptions I made in this spreadsheet well I'm assuming you drive 15,000 miles a year some people will drive less some people will drive a lot more uh, fuel efficiency for the ice vehicle about 30 miles to the gallon you know if you buy a Corolla it'll cost less and you'll, you'll have higher mileage here but I'm also assuming 
roughly the average price of an automobile in the United States right now, which is roughly 48,000. So a Tesla Model 3 long range all wheel drive, you can pick that up for $47,240 at the time I'm making this video. And let's just say the average ICE car is the same price. Okay, so, you know, I made assumptions here, 30 miles to the gallon, uh, cost of fuel per gallon, $3.50, could be more or less. Uh, home charging cost, 15 cents per kilowatt hour, that's what I pay at my house. And then supercharger costs can run anywhere from 25 cents, I think, to 45 cents. Um, I just picked a high value. I said, okay, 40 cents for supercharging. Um, I assumed you take a lot of driving vacations, so you're going to charge at home 70% of the time versus out on the road using superchargers 30% of the time. That's some fairly long trips, by the way. Normally, this number probably would be 80 or 90% but I made the charging cost higher to give less advantage to the Tesla. And then the efficiency, I'm using the efficiency for the Model 3, which is 26 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. And then I'm also assuming that the battery degrades 10% after 10 years, which is about on par with the numbers that we're seeing as these vehicles age. And then I've made a bunch of assumptions over here in terms of maintenance, you know, what, how many miles between brake jobs, you know, your average ICE vehicle, it can be 30, 40,000 miles. Uh, Tesla Model 3, it can be 100 to 130,000 miles. Uh, the brake job cost, I use $700, can change this if you want. And then the miles between tire replacements, you know, 40,000 miles for an ICE vehicle. I made it a bit lower for the Tesla because I've heard the tires go faster because of course it's fun to hit the accelerator. And then, you know, the cost per tire, I made the Tesla tires a bit more expensive. Uh, oil change cost, obviously no cost here. Uh, miles between oil changes, I said 10,000, probably varies from vehicle to vehicle. I know it did in the cars I've owned. And then I also threw in a major repair after 100,000 miles. And you all know if you've owned an ICE car, you will have a big maintenance cost, a bit, you know, something like an air conditioner or, you know, a water pump or a starter or something that's going to go that's going to cost you some serious money or several things that'll come to roughly $3,000. So I threw that in there. I threw a $1,500 cost, major repair cost for the Tesla after 100,000 miles. But I also put a multiplier in there for the second 10 years because the repair will be bigger during that time period. And then I said inflation's about 3%, loan interest rates about 6%, and the loan term is about six years. So you take all these numbers, you throw them in here, and this is what you've got. Now, let's take a look first at just purchasing one Tesla over the whole 300,000 miles and how that compares to your average ICE car. Now you'll notice I don't buy a second Tesla here, but I do have the residual value of the Tesla after 10 years or 150,000 miles. And But in the case of the ICE car, I buy another ICE car, which by the way, now, 10 years later, it's going to cost me 63,000, almost $63,500 because of inflation. So you're buying two cars here, versus one car here. Well, let's take a look at the savings comparison. So if we purchase one Tesla over the 300,000 miles, the Tesla uh, fuel and maintenance just over the first 10 years would cost us almost $19,000. For the average ICE car, it'll be about 32,000. And you can see the difference is $13,652. That's a lot of nice nights out. And then if we look at the 10 year total cost of ownership, for the Tesla, this includes the purchase price, the loan, the maintenance, the, the you know, charging it up, all of that stuff, all in. Uh, and the depreciation and residual value. You, we're talking about $69,342 for the total cost of ownership over 10 years. Whereas with an ICE car, you're talking about a total cost of ownership of almost double that, 1.75 times that. And, and the difference is huge. It's $51,444 over that 
150,000 miles. I mean, that's a nice start on a retirement plan. Um, you know, the annual difference is $5,100. That's a nice vacation. Uh, crazy. And then if we take a look at the whole 20 years, so we hold the Tesla for 20, we buy two ICE cars over that 20 year period. Now we're talking about the Tesla costing us 124,000 over that 20 years or 300,000 miles. It doesn't have to happen in 20 years. And we're looking at the ICE vehicle costing us 200 and almost $283,000. That's a difference of $158,000, almost 159 over that 300,000 miles. That's double what it would cost us to own and maintain and charge a Tesla EV. And by the way, the difference per year, almost $8,000. That's more than you can put in an IRA. Now, let's take a different approach. Let's take this and instead of one Tesla over the 300,000 miles, let's buy two, right? Because you want a new car. You're not gonna want the same old car for 300,000 miles. I know most people aren't like that, but you know, your car will be worth more at 150,000 miles than the ICE vehicle. And you can see that here. The ICE vehicle be worth about 7,000 bucks, while the Tesla will depreciate less and be worth about 25,000. And then I'm assuming that you're paying the same price here for the new Tesla versus the average ICE car. Now, this is, you know, these numbers will change 10 years from now or 150,000 miles from now, but this is just for comparison's sake. So now let's go back and look at the comparison. Well, if we purchase two Teslas over that 300,000 miles, and of course, two ICE vehicles, just like before, well, the first 10 years of fuel and maintenance, same numbers, right? The first 10 years of total cost of ownership, same numbers again. But now over the 20 year total cost of ownership, the Tesla still handily beats the ICE car. 158, almost almost 159,000 total cost of ownership for the Tesla, two Teslas now, versus 282,000, almost 283,000 for two ICE vehicles. The difference is still huge, 124,000 over that 300,000 miles of ownership. And that per year is $6,212. That's a nice IRA or a nice vacation that you can take. Look, the point I'm trying to get across in this video is everybody has been ignoring the fact that a Tesla electric vehicle will easily last 300,000 miles. Where an ICE vehicle, yeah, you could make it last to 300,000 miles, but it's really going to cost you money and headaches and heartache. You don't want to go there. So when you take that into account, the total cost of ownership calculations get absolutely nuts. Financially, it makes absolutely no sense today to buy an internal combustion engine vehicle instead of an electric vehicle. I'm Calvin Rose, and thank you for watching Invest Smarter. That's all for now. Told you, maybe this wrist wasn't goldproof. Packing my bags like it's all true. Hard to make friends when I'm focused on all these bars that I'm holding. I like the cold, but it's lonely. Yeah, this life feels like the sunny water.